Hi and welcome to the True Way Teen Bible Study of the Week. And this week we are looking at a parable of the mustard seed taken from Matthew 13 verses 31 and 32. Now if you haven't already done so, you can head over to our website and download the free printable pack. They will help you to explore this passage better. They'll have study notes, a mind map, activities and lots more that you can do to follow along. So let's start by reading our Bible passage. It's a short parable, just two verses. So Matthew 13 verses 31 and 32 says so jesus told them another parable the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field though it is the smallest of all the seeds yet when it grows it is the largest garden plant and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches in ancient israel one of the smallest seeds which farmers could have sown was that of a grain of mustard It was only a few hundredths of a millimetre in diameter. But despite of how small it was, when it was planted, it would become a bush-like tree. It could reach up to 12 feet high. That's double the size of the average adult man. And it would appear that birds like to build a nest inside these mustard trees, inside these mustard bushes. And a high number of birds were not uncommon to be found there in Jesus' time. And Jesus then uses this parable to demonstrate how a little seed could grow into a big tree and provide shelter and food for the birds. So the object of this parable of the mustard seed, like Jesus' other parables, is to convey a big idea for an easy to understand story. And you know, Jesus used parables like this and the image is so vivid that even 2,000 years later it's easy for us to have this concept of a growing seed growing bigger and bigger. We still understand it. So in this parable Jesus explains the incredible expansion of the kingdom of heaven. So try to imagine this tiny mustard seed in your hand. Then a plant, a little bit bigger, and a 12 feet high, 6 feet wide tree. It seems impossible that from something so small, something so big could be produced. And that's exactly Jesus' point. The idea of the parable of a mercy is that God can turn something small into something big. The disciples may have been wondering how meaningful Jesus' brief ministry would have been. See, he only had a dozen disciples, and in Jesus' earthly life, he wasn't a man of rank or wealth. He lived in what others thought of as a second-class village. He wandered around. And Jesus' life could be seen in the same way as that of the masses, just lying on the ground would be today. We wouldn't take any notice of it. But what looked in that split second as being insignificant became something that would spread throughout the world and into eternity. Jesus' life at that time may not have looked much, but it's changed our world and our eternity forever. So let's look at some points that we can find in the passage. And the first one is that a little faith does great things. Matthew 13, 32. So let's explore this mustard seed a little bit more. We are reminded that we only need a small amount of faith. In this parable, Jesus is reminding us that we only need to trust God because he alone can enable us to do amazing things. We don't need great faith to move mountains as we see in Matthew 17 verse 20. What we need is a grain of hope that's rooted in truth, that's watered in faith and sustained by God's sovereign hand. There's nothing that's impossible for God. Nothing. He can take the impossible circumstances and he can work something exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can even imagine, turning things around for our good and for his glory. Zechariah 4 verse 10 asked, Who dares despise the days of small things? God spoke with these words to exiled Jews. They were returning to Jerusalem following their captivity in Babylon and their efforts to build the temple was being um, hampered by the memory of Solomon's magnificent temple. And we see faith is a journey. It starts off small. And you may feel like your effort for God, what you can do for him is insignificant, but don't let it discourage you. Remember that mustard seed. It grows where we have true faith and we are aligned with God's will as revealed in scripture. God does amazing things. Our second point, let the kingdom of God grow in your life. See, a mustard seed grows into a mustard plant and these can be used for so many different purposes. The seeds can be crushed and they make a spice. They can be mixed with water and vinegar to produce a sauce and the leaves can be eaten raw or cooked. Mustard oil which is obtained by pressing the plant can be used as fuel. It can be used to cook, to heal. What does that mean for us then? It means that when our faith matures, God empowers us to do more than we could do when we first met him. Like a seed, faith is alive, it is active, it is living, it is expanding. By reading God's word, by praying, by worshipping and by learning, 
we will help strengthen our faith and we begin to witness the expansion of the kingdom of God in our own heart, in the hearts of our loved ones, in the hearts of those who we come into contact with. Like a plant, sometimes growth can seem slow, slower than we want, especially when we are watching it and we're waiting for something. But be sure of this, that while you might not see that change overnight, God is transforming you daily. Thirdly, genuine faith spreads and impacts others. The master's seed was planted and in favorable conditions, it only required three to ten days and it would begin to grow already. And the master seed is actually by gardeners being identified as having hazardous takeover property due to its rapid growth. So gardeners will tell you that once a master seed is sown, it's really difficult to clear that area because the seeds germinate immediately when they fall. And similarly, genuine faith spreads swiftly, spreads quickly. When a person encounters the Lord Jesus and is truly born again, then it's not difficult for that person, for us, to speak about God's grace. It overflows from our lives. When we are planted and rooted in God's goodness, our lives and our actions change. See also John 15. See, it should be natural for us to spread the seeds of gospel with people we meet. It should be as natural for us to be sowing the seeds of the gospel as it is for a mustard plant to produce more mustard seeds. It should overflow from our lives. God can use you as a tremendous witness in your neighborhood and around the world. Simply be willing and available. Don't be scared to share your faith. Be always remember to be strong and courageous because God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Now fourth point is this. Allow your heart to be a good soil full of seed. See, a mustard is little, but if it grows when it's put in good soil, that single seed will then turn into a shrub, into a bush, into a tree that the birds of the sky can rest on. But there is the condition. That seed needs to be planted, and it needs to be planted in good soil. Remember what we seen a few weeks ago in the parable of the sower? Without soil preparation, we hinder the harvest, and our efforts, as good as they are, is in vain. The same seed planted in good soil or the same seed planted in cement obviously produce very different results. One grows, one dies. Our hearts must be receptive then to God's word for it to grow in our lives and to bear fruit. We need to allow our hearts to become responsive to God's presence, to his will and his love. And that will help us to cultivate a healthy heart soil by the help of the Holy Spirit. So with God's grace, we can cultivate the soil in our hearts and then we start living in complete devotion to his loving and perfect will. With a willing heart, God will mold us and he will shape us into people equipped to live Christ-like, fruitful lives. So in conclusion, there's so many things we can learn from this small mass of seed that grows into something big. We mustn't overlook our humble days that we live in. Maybe it looks like we're doing something small now, but even the small things we do, we should do them our best in serving God because God can create the small things and make something big from them. And as the seed produces a plant which produces more seeds, so our lives should be spilling out seeds of the gospel to those who that others may also grow as the kingdom of God from, continues to expand around the world as it's done for the days of Jesus your own. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you that nothing is impossible for you. Father, we realize that in ourselves we don't have much to give, but with a little you could do much. Father, we thank you. Help us to be willing. Help us to produce hearts which are fertile soil for your seed. And help us to sow the seeds of the gospel. Father, we thank you for your grace in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.